Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kansas Actress by ABBA. If you're new here, welcome. My name is ABBA and I am a board certified medical physicist. I help treat cancer with radiation. My hope for you is that you get a better understanding of the science and medicine behind the amazing technology and processes that make this possible. One of the biggest challenges in this field is that the tumor isn't always still. The motion of the tumor can be affected by the patient's breathing or any internal processes so it becomes difficult to target the tumor and spare normal tissue. In a previous video, I talked about 4DCT as a method to manage tumor motion. I'll put the link to this video in the description below. So in this episode, I'll be answering the question, should cancer patients hold their breath? Or in other words, should patients who are receiving radiation therapy hold their breath while under treatment? The answer to this is sometimes. It definitely depends on the situation and on what the physician requires the patient to do. So keep watching, because this is tied to the idea of tumor motion management. And I'll give you two situations in which it really benefits the patient to hold your breath. Before I go into these examples, definitely subscribe to Cancer Zappers by ABBA to learn as much as you can from my short and easy to understand videos. Also, don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I put out new videos. So let's start with the first scenario, a patient with a lung tumor. This is a patient's upper body looking at them standing in front of you face to face. This is the right lung and this is the left lung. And this here is a lung tumor. If the patient breathes freely, the tumor moves in different directions. In order to best zap the tumor with radiation, it's important to give it enough margin so that the radiation doesn't miss the tumor. But as you can see, by giving it enough margin, we end up treating a lot of normal lung tissue. So this is no good. Treating normal tissue to high doses can lead to bad reactions like pneumonitis, which is inflammation of lung tissue. Now imagine the same person holds your breath. The tumor doesn't move and stays put. As a result, we don't need as big a margin since we're pretty sure we can target it right here. It's not moving anywhere, it's right here. Not much normal lung tissue gets irradiated because we are using a much smaller margin. So this is very good, this is what we like. So in this scenario, I've shown how holding one's breath can lead to better targeting of the tumor and sparing of normal tissue. Now let's look at the next scenario, radiation of the left breast or left chest wall. Here, try to imagine a person on a couch. You're looking at a cross section through the body, angling your eyes from your foot to head. When treating the breast or chest wall, the traditional setup is to treat the breast tangentially. In other words, using two photon beams on each side of the breast, one from the medial and the other from the lateral side, meeting together at the breast or chest wall, like in this diagram here. Now, as you can see, the heart is generally majorly on the left side of the chest. When treating the left breast, the heart is a very important organ to consider as it is close to the treatment beams. When the patient takes a deep breath in and holds it, the heart may move away from the chest wall and hence from the treatment beams, thus protecting the heart. This process is known as deep inspiration breath hold. If the patient, on the other hand, continues to breathe freely, the average effect may result in the heart being closer to the treatment fields, thereby receiving higher dose. Higher dose to the heart increases the risk of heart failure. So there you have it, at least two scenarios in which holding one's breath can be beneficial for the patient sparing lung tissue and sparing the heart. Of course, we can tell if holding one's breath makes a difference during simulation before the treatment has been planned. If it doesn't make a difference during simulation for the patient to hold their breath, then the patient obviously should continue to breathe freely as this is the easier option. Also, there are certain populations of patients where breath hold doesn't work because not everyone can hold their breath for useful long periods of time. This can lead to a difficult situation for both patient and therapist where the patient spends a longer time on the treatment couch trying to hold their breath but they can't because it's hard for them and becomes more uncomfortable and anxious as a result. So it really matters who is asked to hold their breath. Definitely like this video and comment down below and let me know if breath hold is also performed in your clinic. Let me know what your experience has been with the breath hold technique, whether you are a healthcare worker, provider, or a patient yourself. I would love to hear from you. 
In the next video, I'll be talking more about other motion management strategies, but we'll be focusing this time on the dosimetry team's involvement with the treatment planning side of things. See ya!